If you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, and starting with verse 12, my Bible calls this section suffering for God's glory. You might remember that last week I shared a sermon from the verses right before this passage. And so at the beginning of this past week, I wanted to read on in chapter 4 for the context because I always like to bring Scripture within the context of where it's found and not just pick a verse out by itself because uh, like um, First Peter, Peter wrote this letter in a continuing form and usually the idea leads through uh, several verses or even passages of Scripture. Now when I begin to read here about suffering for God's glory, I almost just wanted to go ahead and quickly read on through it and go on to next chapter. But then it felt like God was telling me, pause here a little bit, stop and think about this, don't ignore what this scripture is saying right here. And so I'd like to read then from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, on to the end of the chapter. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. We are about to enter into the Easter season in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain and lives again. He has risen. And he is now sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. But in this celebration of the resurrection of Christ, we cannot ignore that Christ suffered extremely in the crucifixion. We can't just jump past the crucifixion. Isaiah 53, 5 gave a prophecy of the death of Christ hundreds and hundreds of years before he even was born as a babe. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. The Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Christ suffered. Now we don't glory in the suffering of Christ, but we do recognize 
and acknowledge that Christ did suffer substantially as he was crucified on the cross for us. Peter is telling us here to expect suffering in our own lives. We should not, as ministers of the gospel, paint a really rosy picture of what it is to be a Christian. Come to Christ and you'll never have any struggles. Come to Christ and your life will be gloriously blessed from then on. And, and to some extent, those statements are true. But yet Peter, at this point in the gospel and many other places in the Bible, tells us that we will have trials and tribulations. You and I all can testify to the fact that we have been through some very trying times in our lives. Sometimes I hear of what some people go through and I think, oh Lord, could I endure such a thing? And just this morning on the way to church, on our way to church, we heard of, well, we were talking about a classmate of Christie's. She had a class reunion yesterday. I didn't get to go. But she found out that one of her classmates just found that she has a brain tumor and cannot do anything for that either. And so we were just kind of listing one after another of these people that are struggling so much. And I know the first question that any of us can tend to have, and, and I certainly can deal with this question, is why God? Why Lord? And I would ask that if it happened to me, I, I'm sure. Now the apostles... Uh, Peter and Paul and all the others experienced much persecution to the extent of death. And they expected it. As we have the account of Paul's missionary journeys in Acts, sometimes I just wonder how a man like Paul could have endured what he did. I mean, they beat him up and left him in the road for dead. He got up, recovered, and went back to the same place where that happened. And Paul and Silas was jailed. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, they're in jail saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I got a feeling that if I get arrested this week, I will not be sitting in jail rejoicing. I won't write you a letter. This was written from their imprisonment. Suffering and trials are an integral part of the Christian life. And we need, I believe, the Lord was telling me as I began to read on toward the end of the chapter this past week, that there is a role for suffering in our lives. It has its place. Don't be deceived by Satan that suffering means God has turned away from you. Don't believe that God has deserted you. Even if it seems like your prayers may not be answered the way you would prefer. Now, I really wouldn't call my experiences this past week suffering. But I will say this past week was not my favorite week. A couple things just went differently than what I...
Some of you know I was making a pretty long bus trip down to Winchester from Petersburg, and I was making this trip at 4 o'clock in the morning, being in Winchester by about 6.30 in the morning. Well, on Monday morning, I was on the way back with about 10 people on the bus, and on 68... I was making the right turn a little bit, and I just barely got past the white line and got on the rumble strips with the bus. Well, naturally, I just turned back. (laughs) Well, someone on the bus called the office and said the driver went to sleep while he was driving us back to Petersburg. (laughs) I didn't go to sleep. But, of course, they have to react a little bit to that, so I was taken off the run. (laughs) I thought, why did that happen? And so I did a little bit of this, um, you know, conversation with God about this. All right, Lord, why did you let that happen? Sometimes we don't get ready answers to something like that, but I thought, well, maybe it prevents me from going to sleep and actually having an accident sometime. I don't know. But I was willing to say, all right, Lord, you get the glory in whatever happened because maybe there is some kind of purpose in it. Throughout all of the early ages of Christianity, Christ's people have suffered. And incidentally, I want to mention that the suffering of Christians have not, has not stopped in the world. I have heard that some statistics that say there were more people who lost their lives for the cause of Christ in the past couple years than in the rest of church history combined. A lot of people right now in the world are dying because of their faith in Christ Jesus. At our Central Allegheny Regional Meeting this past Friday, Brother Grover was sharing about a pastor in Africa who has basically had his life threatened and he is Scared to to death, basically. He's very frightened about what is happening. He wrote a note that was kind of almost a note of desperation that he can't do the things that he wants to do because of his life being threatened. And we have had pastors different times in Africa come under uh, threats So what opportunities are there in suffering for the, tri- for the Christian person? Is there a role in our lives when these types of things come? One of the things is that we can grow during our trials. One of the roles of Satan of suffering is as Paul would write to the Romans in chapter 5 verse 3 of Romans we glory in our tribulations I'm not sure I've grown enough in the Lord to glory in my tribulations but I at least want to be able to hold on to my faith in Christ even during the times of struggle that I will not turn away from God, I will not believe the lies Satan tries to speak to me during these times, and I have to say that I have not experienced the kind of suffering that so many people have. My prayers are with these people. But finding joy in trials is an experience given by the Holy Spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit within us that helps us 
to even have an underlying joy. And I want to mention that joy is much different than happiness. Now, happiness usually occurs because of circumstances at the moment. You know, things are going pretty good. I'm happy. Things turn bad. I'm not happy. But joy is an underlying stability that can still be in our life. We can still be joyful even though things are not necessarily gone the way we want. My experience is that it is difficult when things are not going well. It's only by the Holy Spirit that I can keep my perspective You know, I had to compare the struggles that I have as I live here in the United States, and we just got back from Guatemala, you know, three weeks ago, with the kind of struggles they have in Guatemala, the poorest of the poor, I would call it the epitome of poverty, basically. And I try to understand just what kind of challenges they have and it helps me keep my perspective in the struggles that I have. Now, Romans 5, I'd like to turn there. Romans 5 basically gives us a step-by-step -step progression in our suffering. Romans 5, 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And then verse 3 of Romans 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Now here's the progression of steps. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And then, perseverance, character. And then, character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, you want to keep rem remembering that when the Scripture talks about hope, it's not a... Well, I hope so, it might happen or it might not. That's not the hope of Scripture. The hope that Scripture talks about is the absolute yes, it will happen. Sometimes it's called the blessed hope. And when we hear and see in Scripture the blessed hope, we're right here when it says, now hope does not disappoint. This is the real hope. Hope of God, the absolute yes in this kind of hope. Tribulation. Perseverance is staying under pressure. Not running away. When the Christian preserves, they grow in determination to maintain our faith in God. Even in the midst of of others criticizing. I think about the sufferings of Job in the Old Testament. You know, even his wife said, curse God and die. Can you imagine the, the struggle that he could have had? And then another role of suffering, I believe, happens in our life. Our relationship to Christ can be strengthened in times of suffering. I notice that when I have times of suffering, I am closer to God then than at other times. It even seems like I can hear or be conscious of the Holy Spirit in my life more when I'm having struggles. And I think my faith can grow. And some have testified of an increasing presence of God since in their hardships. People can be changed 
during times of suffering and struggle. C.S. Lewis is a man that I uh, appreciate a lot. He wrote a book, um, and the title is escaping my memory right at the moment, but a very good book, which I, I have and have read. But he said this, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our, me in our pain. It is... It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Suffering can be a part of God's plan for us. Now, it's not a very exciting plan. I will admit that. And when I pray to be in the will of God, I usually don't have suffering in mind. Well, that's not what I meant, Lord. I want to be in your will, but, you know, I had preaching crusades in mind. Not suffering. Not rejection. Now, in times of suffering, also, a role can, we can have. It is an opportunity to witness of Christ's faithfulness. And even Scripture says... Endure the pain of affliction because the things in which you have endured, you will be able to help other people who experience the same thing. As I mentioned, I think last week, you know, I am a TBI survivor. That's traumatic brain injury. And so we went to meetings for a little bit support meetings for those who have survived TBI. Now, our experiences were not exactly the same. And listen, try to avoid saying to someone else, I know how you feel. No, you don't. Even if you've had the same thing, we don't know how another person feels. The only thing we know is how we felt. Now, even in that, we might be able to relate and to be of some support and encouragement. But remember, we don't know exactly how another person feels. But we can have an opportunity to witness to Christ's faithfulness. You know, I've experienced a great miracle. And I really want to shout it from the mountaintops. The Lord brought me through a life or death injury. And I was able to go on and live my life. I, I'm amazed. And how, how thankful can you be after something like that? And lastly, there's many more roles than I'm able to bring out. But lastly, suffering has a cleansing effect on the inner spirit of a person. Let me tell you, if you're not right with God in the midst of suffering, you'll soon get right with him. You'll be praying whether you feel like it or not. And this word here from the Old Testament, basically, is a quote. I believe it is from uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 11.31. If the righteous one is scarcely saved. And I wondered about this idea of scarcely being saved. I didn't feel like I was scarcely saved. I believe I am saved. 100%. But this word scarcely in the Greek means more in terms of purification. So it would, would basically mean somewhat if the righteous one is 
purified or barely purified perhaps where will the ungodly and the sinner appear through the struggles the Christian confirms where their hope is found I have found that my faith has grown in the struggles it's like well may God's will be done it's not a cop out I've heard some ministers say you shouldn't pray may God's will be done because that's just copping out. I don't believe that at all. I cover my prayers with the will of God. No matter what I'm asking. If what I'm asking is outside the will of God, well, Lord, please have the will of God in my life and not my prayers. I have witnessed many people who go through physically physical suffering that have come to a saving faith in Christ. And that's usually how I pray about our prayer list and the prayer needs. And I remember I did this morning to pray that the principal thing, the greatest need, do we have faith in Christ for salvation? Above any physical healing we can get. That is the chief prayer. That we know Christ as Lord and Savior. And I have seen people in the hospital. In the midst of struggling. Come to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Is there a role of suffering Yes, there is. It's more than just the pain and the struggle. It's really what God is continuing to do in our life at all times. Good and seemingly the struggling times. Now let us pray now. Heavenly Father, this might have been a scripture that I would have preferred to pass over, but it seems like the Holy Spirit said, wait, don't jump past. Stop and listen to what I might want to tell you about the struggles that you can have. And so, Lord, when I began to search this a little more, it felt like something I wanted to share with the congregation. It's not a fun subject, but yet it's a real, it's reality in all of our lives. I don't know what's going to happen this coming week or even today, but I know the Lord walks with me. No matter what, he has not deserted me. He will be there all the time. May my faith remain strong and absolute in the God who loves me and always will. May the will of God be done in my life, I pray it. In Jesus' name, amen.